Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're looking at musical artists who went from topping the charts to vanishing from the public eye, or at least mega popularity. When I wake your, you're never there. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, LaRue. LaRue's self-titled album won the Grammy for Best Electronic Dance Album at the 53rd Annual Ceremony in 2011. A year later, the band was a shadow of its former self. The name LaRue was still around, but what was once the duo of Ellie Jackson and Ben Langmaid became just Jackson when Langmaid left the group in 2012. The latter had been a songwriter and producer for the group, while Jackson also served as a songwriter, but also its lead singer. The new LaRue, with Jackson as the sole member, put out two albums after 2012. While the projects received generally positive critical acclaim, neither one had the same impact of that first record. Number 9. B.O.B. Did you know this rapper released albums in 2018, 2020, and 2022? Most audiences didn't notice, which would have seemed like an impossibility when B.O.B.'s career first took off. So here I stand and then again I think. I'm hoping we can make some wishes out of airplane. In 2010, he put out his first studio album and hit the top of the US Billboard 200 chart and saw three singles reach the top 10 as well. Fueled by commercial success and media buzz, he released two more LPs in the next three years. Keep your nourishment first and your mind on my lyrics because what you hoping to accomplish, I already did it. But as fast as he was everywhere, he just as quickly disappeared from pop music relevance. Since 2016, B.O.B.'s beliefs that the earth is flat has made more waves in the culture than his tunes. My whole clique outside of the norm. Number 8. Jewel. Between 1995 and 2008, Jewel released six studio albums, not including her holiday collection. Every one of them reached the top 10 on the Billboard 200 chart. While mostly a folk artist, Jewel did depart from her genre of choice with her turn towards pop in 2003's 0304 and the country project Perfectly Clear in 2008. This is me. After that period of success, she continued working and making music, including another holiday album, two records for children, and several studio albums. But none of those later projects have found the broad acclaim she enjoyed at the turn of the century. Well, excuse me, guess I'm mistaking you for somebody else. Number 7, Natalie Imbruglia. After her multi-platinum debut album, Left of the Middle, Natalie Imbruglia shot into pop stardom on the rocket ship that was torn. The releases earned Imbruglia multiple Grammy nominations, but it wouldn't sustain her for very long. While that first album sold more than 7 million copies, her next five records combined sold just 3 million copies globally. You've forgotten how it started. Close your eyes. However, Imbruglia popped back onto the scene across the pond after a winning stint on the UK version of The Masked Singer. Her triumph as Panda may have contributed to the relative success of her 2021 album, Firebird. Number 6. Vitamin C Doctors are always telling us to take vitamin C, but for a few years in the late 90s and early 2000s, we couldn't avoid the stuff, even if we wanted to. Colleen Ann Fitzpatrick was relatively unknown until 1998, when she took on the stage name Vitamin C and released her self-titled album the next year. It went platinum, and she wasn't unknown anymore.
In 2001, she released a second, less successful album, and that was that. But while C disappeared from Pop's public view, she moved behind the scenes. She's written and produced songs, worked as a VP of music at Nickelodeon, and joined Netflix as a music executive. I took the experience that I had as an entrepreneur um, working in all these different areas, and I sort of synthesized them into a, a job. And I Number five, CeeLo Green. For a time in the 2000s and 2010s, it felt like CeeLo Green was the map. As one half of Gnarls Barkley, Green saw mega success with the 2006 song Crazy. A few years later, he released his third solo album as a solo artist, The Lady Killer. The first single off that record may have had a crude title, but that didn't stop it from going seven times platinum in the US. I guess he's an Xbox and I'm more than tired of the way you play your game and play. Green left his very visible gig as a coach on The Voice at the end of 2013, and since then has stayed mostly out of the charts. Although he's continued to release music, his reputation has also suffered due to allegations of abuse and legal issues. Leave me, cause I've been going nowhere. Number 4. Michelle Branch this talented singer-songwriter had a brief moment of pop stardom at the turn of the 21st century. In 2001 and 2003, Michelle Branch released two platinum-selling albums, The Spirit Room and Hotel Paper. The latter rose as high as second on the Billboard 200. But as everywhere as she was for those first few years, the pop rock version of Branch that rose to popularity practically vanished for over a decade. Yes, she did have a Grammy-nominated song in 2006 as part of the country duo The Wreckers, but it would take another 11 years for Branch to release her fourth album as a solo artist, and five more years to release her fifth. Number 3, Tayo Cruz. Here's one artist that definitely experienced the highs and lows of the music world. While Tayo Cruz's first album did all right, his sophomore effort, Rockstar, took Cruz to the peak of pop. The record made it to eighth place on the Billboard 200 and spawned two top five singles, Break Your Heart and Dynamite. In subsequent years, he recorded Telling the World for the animated film Rio and was credited as a co-writer on David Guetta's hit track Without You. During his peak popularity, Cruz made a couple attempts at starting a fashion brand, but years later, the business appeared dead. His music releases have been similarly sparse. I'm in a battle with my heartbeat. The more I struggle, the more I get deep. Number 2. Leanne Rhymes. At age 13, Leanne Rhymes jumped onto the pop star map with Blue. The album not only hit number one on the country album charts, but rose to three on the Billboard 200. Her next three albums all broke the top 10, and Rhymes held her own in terms of sales in the 90s. But she wasn't done. In 2005 and 2007, two more of her albums cracked the top five. Although she continued to see success on the country charts in the 2010s, her impact on a wider audience wasn't the same. Instead, most of the pop culture talk surrounding Rhymes in that time was in regards to her affair with and subsequent marriage to actor Eddie Cibrian. It's not like I was planning on it. Baby, but I'm very persuasive. Yeah, persuasive is not the word. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Magic. We are not being rude, but this group hasn't had a U.S. charting song since that number one hit. Natasha Bedingfield. Bedingfield's last single to crack the Billboard 100 came out in 2010. 
Vanessa Carlton. These days, Carlton's pop relevance feels about a thousand miles away. I still need you. I still miss you. Travi McCoy. Doesn't look like McCoy will be a billionaire, no matter how bad he wants it. I probably take whatever's left and just split it up. So everybody that I love can have a couple bucks. Sheryl Crow, she might not be on the map anymore, but she is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. All I wanna do is have some fun. I got a feeling the party has just begun. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Alanis Morissette Back in the mid-90s, if you had one hand in your pocket, the other one was probably holding an Alanis Morissette CD. And I'm here to remind you. The Canadian singer-songwriter released two albums in the early 90s, but it was her 1995 record, Jagged Little Pill, that became a pop music phenomenon. The album was nominated for nine Grammys, taking home five. After Jagged Little Pill sold over 33 million copies around the world, her next two releases weren't as big. But they both still found themselves atop the Billboard 200 chart. But you ought to know that Morissette only released three albums from 2012 to 2022, with diminishing commercial returns. I give heart and part heart and now I need to retreat. Have you continued to follow any of these artists? Let us know in the comments. But you get what you give in this life that we live And all that you do will come back to you Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments! And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here!